You know, people often think about format and the image sensor size as the determining factor in your photography, but for me, the choice of the format, the film, the sensor, has far more to do with the way I actually work with the camera itself. Now I have considered shooting this tree uh, many times before, but the light's never been right and it's not right at the moment. There's far too much contrast there. I think if I was to get some light on the actual trunk here, it's absolutely magnificent. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So film format or sensor size, and it, the way it drives my photography is that the, the bigger the camera, the bigger the sensor, the slower I have to work, the fewer shots I will take, the less mobile I am. Now I'm out in my local forest today. I can come here whenever I like. So I've decided to go with the 4x5 large format camera. And that means I'm gonna take an awfully long time before I break it out and decide to take a shot. And the other thing about carrying such a large camera as this is I'm unlikely to go scouting with it. I pretty much need to know where I'm gonna shoot and, and roughly have an idea of what I'm gonna shoot because the setup time is so long and convoluted that if it doesn't work, that's an awful lot of time spent. Whereas with a 35 millimeter or digital camera, I could just move on. This is a really big investment in my time, not to mention money for the film itself. Now, this is actually a scene I have shot before with the large format camera. However, I shot it with a six by 12 back. Today, I'm hoping to shoot it with a full size piece of four by five film. And I'm thinking it's actually gonna be color Right, having carefully set up my camera now, uh, leveled it all off initially, got it all in plain, the front and rear standards, I put the 150 millimeter standard lens on, which is perfect for this scene. It gives me just enough coverage. And I've decided to go with Portra 400. Now, Portra 400 isn't your first thought when you think about landscapes, but it is a very soft and gentle film. And um, whilst I've liked Ektar in the past, I must admit it doesn't really do it for me these days. I just find it a bit garish, to be honest, and uh, I prefer the subtlety of the portrait range. Not to say I won't use Ektar. So I've had to focus in on the tree, and uh, it was quite difficult, so I, I did have to use a little laser pen to get me accurate and, and pretty critical there. So the next step with a large format camera is to insert the film holder to the back of the camera, and hope everything's good and tight and well seated so we get no light leaks. And that's just a case of taking a meter reading with the little Staconic spot meter. Now it's quite even the lighting today. So as I look around the scene, if I'm going for F22, I'm getting between a second and two seconds just about everywhere. So given that it's color negative, I'm gonna give it two seconds at F22. That'll be plenty of shadow detail. And there are no highlights to run away because I've not included the sky. Well, this one actually turned out better than I could ever hope for. I mean, the colours, well, the colours are absolutely perfect. That is exactly the sort of colour I like. I prefer it to the look of the slide film and even digital. Now, details wise, there is a lot of detail in here. It has been sharpened a little bit just to bring it up because it was scanned on my relatively old and low resolution Epson flatbed scanner, a V700. But yes, I'm really, really happy with it. So definitely something I would want to revisit again with large format film. It's a, it's a delightful location and really, really easy to shoot for me. Now, despite this stuff coming in at about 10 pounds a sheet at the moment, I am actually gonna take a, a safety shot because it's a beautiful morning. It's the right time of year. Well, just hold your horses there. I thought I'd nailed it on the first one. And to be honest, 10 pounds more developing, Ooh, I did give it a second thought. And in the end, I decided just to shoot the single frame. So this whole format thing and the way it affects my photography is probably really well demonstrated today. I mean, that is a very expensive shoot for me. I know the scene, I believe it works compositionally. And as I said, if I was using a smaller format film or, or digital, I wouldn't give it a second thought. But given the amount of time and effort and money to get this particular scene, I've had to give it great consideration and I think that leads to better photographs ultimately. I'm not saying I don't like my other type of shooting, I do, it's more spontaneous, it's more free flowing, but this is a different thing altogether and this is completely dictated by the machinery, the mechanics of photography, the decisions I made before I came out and I quite like that at times. Now normally I'd be quite happy with just that one shot on a large format shoot 
However, that shot was something I had in mind when I came out and it didn't take me more than half an hour from arriving to taking it. So I've got plenty of time, well worth a bit of a wander and maybe another sheet or two of film. I'm still drawn back to this one here. It's absolutely beautiful, but can I make something of it? Well, I think the honest answer is no, I can't make anything of this in this lighting. And I think that uh, falls nicely into the theme, which is, had I been shooting this on any other format, even my medium format, Veronica, I'd have taken a shot because not a huge investment in time, two or three pounds in film costs, but, you know, 10, 20 pounds of film, half an hour to try and get it set up, and the light's not right. What it really needs is light falling on this magnificent old specimen. I mean, this needs to be lit up. The background is far too light to make this work, so the format has dictated that I don't shoot this today. I spent a fair bit of time wandering around these, these trees here. Yeah, I've been in and out of this area, up around about these trunks. Interesting, but again, the light is far too dull to pick anything out and give any sort of contour to it or shape, so I'll move on. Well, I actually ended up pretty much where I started, only about 30 or 40 feet away from the first composition. A scene I'd previewed earlier, and it wasn't perfect though. There were compromises in it, but it was the best I could do. So I set myself up with the camera in a vertical orientation and went back to work. Well, the metering for this one is again, relatively straightforward because there's such a low contrast range this morning, although it's a little bit brighter than it was earlier. Two seconds at f32. Now it was two seconds at f22 earlier, so you know it is a little bit brighter now. I'm focusing on the foreground trees, these, these bright silver birch. I expect, even with my lens being at f32, to be some drop up in the background. I actually want that. I'd actually prefer that because it gives some separation. Now the lens I'm using today for this shot is a gentle wide angle. It's actually a hundred millimeter and it's an F9 lens. It's a 1934 Gers Dagor. So it's, it's pretty old, obviously no coatings. They hadn't been invented in those days. It's quite soft as well, but I have shot Portra 400 with it before on this video in the woods, maybe four or five years ago. And I do like the way it renders these woodland scenes. It's not critically sharp. It's got a bit of a glow about it and it does suit the color negative film. So let's take a couple of frames with this or maybe just one frame, depending on how I'm feeling how much money I've got, and uh, yeah, let's crack on. Now, I'll be honest, as I actually took that shot, the light did dip in a little bit, and I reckon I may be shy one stop there, so it may be a little bit on the underexposed side. Having said that, there's plenty of latitude in the film. If it is slightly underexposed, it'll actually be slightly more colorful with Portra 400, so, I won't know till I get it back and into the Jobo and get it processed this afternoon, but uh, two fingers crossed. Well, the exposure was absolutely spot on, to be honest, I was probably slightly generous anyway. But the shot, I really don't like the shot. It, it's just not on par with the first one. And I think I knew that when I set up for it, it was more of a bonus than anything else. I don't like the composition too much. You see, the problem is, is those darker, uh, tree trunks those narrow ones pulling out the frame left and right which just destroy it for me and the other elements aren't strong enough if you actually look at this one here where i've removed those others uh, it is slightly better but still not good enough and i wouldn't do that anyway i don't like modifying images so much so eh, not a bad shot i suppose not going to go in the portfolio anytime soon but uh, pretty good lens performance well, I'm all done. And I have to be honest, I would have uh, enjoyed having the Veronica with me perhaps today to make the most of one or two shots, which I just didn't have time to do with the large format. And I didn't have the money in my wallet to pay for the film either. So very enjoyable. I am going to get back now and get these two frames developed. And hopefully I'll be out again with the large format camera 
when it suits my mood and the particular location and the time of year. So thank you very much for coming along with me on my woodland walk again, and I'll see you again soon.